Welcome to the MUFG Global Markets FX Week Ahead podcast with Lee Hardman, Currency Analyst at MUFG. It's Tuesday, May 4th, 2021, and in our preview of the week, we're discussing the key themes for the FX financial markets. The following podcast is intended for professional investors and eligible counterparties only, and not for retail clients. Any content should not be regarded as an offer to conduct investment business or an investment recommendation, but for information purposes only. Good morning, Lee. And what are you expecting from the Bank of England policy update this week? Hi, morning. Yeah, this week is going to be uh, an eventful one for the pound. Um, like you say, first up, we've got the, um, the Bank of England uh, latest policy update. And we're looking for the Bank of England this week to show uh, more optimism over the outlook for the UK recovery uh, going forward. Um, they're likely to uh, upgrade their forecasts for, for GDP um, over the kind of medium term. Um, and we think there are kind of a couple of reasons why that's likely to be the case. Um, firstly, we've seen the UK economy has been more resilient than expected at the start of this year. Uh, despite the um, the first lockdown being put in place, and that to us kind of provides kind of reassurance that the economy is kind of adjusting to these restrictions. Uh, secondly, we've also seen the government announce um, bigger fiscal stimulus in the latest budget, and also outside of the UK, particularly in the US, we've seen uh, the announcement as well of bigger fiscal stimulus there as well. And I think all in all, that that's supportive for the kind of global growth. Uh, outlook. Uh, and then finally, in terms of kind of COVID developments here in the UK, they also continue to show uh, improvement with the number of kind of cases, deaths and people in hospital all continuing to fall, which all points towards kind of the uh, effectiveness of the vaccines. Um, and that that's giving us kind of more confidence that the economy can continue to reopen more fully going forward. And that should allow the economy to start bouncing back more strongly uh, from the second quarter uh, onwards. Um, so I think those positive developments will be kind of acknowledged by the Bank of England. And that potentially as well could um, for prompt them to um, show a slightly higher risk of inflation rising above their targets um, over the next sort of two to three year period, um, which which would give them some, some justification um, to think about um, potentially tightening policy. Uh, going forward. And um, I think that's what the market is starting to speculate about as well uh, ahead of this meeting is the the prospect that we could see some form of uh, QE tapering announcement from the Bank of England. At the moment, they are kind of currently purchasing uh, uh, up to 875 billion sterling of of, um, of assets, and that's set to be completed by the end of of this year. Uh, But as we and the market are aware already, uh, the kind of current weekly pace of purchases of 4.4 billion. Um, if they were to continue at that pace uh, going forward, then that would kind of um, fully utilize those 875 billion of planned purchases by the uh, the 10th of September. So the Bank of England obviously have a choice to make going forward. Um, they will either decide to extend that QE program and continue at the current pace of QE purchases or What's more likely, we think, is that they'll have to announce that they're going to slow the pace of those purchases uh, going forward. And it kind of just remains to be seen whether they decide to announce that slowdown in the pace of purchases as soon as, as this week. Uh, we think on balance, we think the bank bank probably will kind of hold off this week. But um, we think as they move kind of closer towards the summer, we will get an announcement that they will uh, taper the uh, the QE purchases, uh, go, go through the rest of, of this year and um I think even if, if they don't get that kind of announcement as soon as this week, that, that could initially lead to some kind of pound weakness and disappointment. But like we say, I think the Bank of England is, is moving closer to ultimately tapering QE later this year. And we think that will be supportive for the pound. So any initial pound weakness this week, we would see is probably more of a kind of temporary uh, phenomenon. And, and we would expect the pounds to kind of pound to bounce back as we move forward. And turning to politics, what impact do you think the Scottish parliamentary elections will have on the pound, Lee? Well, I think if we look at the latest opinion polls uh, going into the uh, the Scottish elections, they're all pointing towards the pro-independence parties, uh, the SNP, the new Alba party, and also the Greens, 
Uh, together, those are all expected to win a majority of seats in the parliamentary election. So from that perspective, a kind of strong showing for the pro-independence parties should be kind of well well anticipated by markets. I don't think that would be a surprise. Um, what is probably a little bit more uncertain is whether the S&P themselves can win a, an outright majority. On that side of things, it looks like a finer, finer call. So uh, that's something the market will be probably watching closely for uh, when those results are released uh, at the end of, of this week. Um, certainly, if the S&P were to outperform expectations and win a, a majority outright, um, then that could initially trigger some some pound selling at the end of the week. Um, but again, we think this would be, probably be relatively modest and, and short-lived. Um, yes, obviously, if the S&P do win a, a majority on their own, um, a, a strong showing from from them would would certainly kind of um, reinforce their case to hold a, a fresh uh, Scottish uh, independence referendum. Uh, that's obviously something that they're campaigning strongly for. And if they were to get the public backing um, in, in the elections this week, then um, that would obviously give them uh, more momentum to continue to, to bang that drum uh, going forward. Um, and certainly they could also point towards as well uh, opinion polls in Scotland uh, in recent years have, have also shown a continued rise in support for independence uh, since the last referendum was held back in 2014. Obviously in, in, that, in that referendum, I think 55% of the people voted against independence, whereas about 45% were in, in favour whereas it looks closer to around 50-50 uh, in more recent polls. So certainly there is kind of support growing for, for independence in Scotland, and that's something that the S&P are obviously looking to kind of take advantage of and, and push their case for independence going forward. Um, however, we would still kind of stress at this point that we think that the risk of another kind of referendum being held, um, that's something which is going to be kind of further into the future. Uh, we don't see that happening uh, anytime soon and uh, for, from that perspective it's difficult to really see what markets why markets would be kind of overly kind of concerned or, or by by the uh, the results of, of the election uh, this week and I think it's more of a kind of like I say a kind of short-term uh, movement for, for the pound and I think this is going to be something which really has this kind of lasting negative impact uh, on the pound and ultimately that's because even if the S&P are kind of demanding another referendum we just don't see the UK government agreeing to hold one um, anytime soon, um, particularly right now, obviously, when the kind of main focus of the government here in the UK and globally is obviously to try and deal with the, uh, the global pandemic. So really difficult to make a strong case that there's a real need to hold a referendum as soon as possible in, in Scotland. So I think as long as it's not a kind of short term risk for markets to worry about, then I think markets probably kind of look through this risk in, in the short term. So we kind of agree with market pricing right now. If you look at kind of short term implied volatility for the pound, it has increased in terms of looking over the, the next week um, in terms of maturity, but um, it's, it's still relatively modest uh, compared to what we've seen recently. And um, certainly the, the, the markets, the options market, isn't really seeing this as a, a major event risk for the pound in the week ahead. Thank you very much for your insight, Lee. Have a good week and speak to you soon. Great, thank you. Thank you for listening to this MUFG Global Markets podcast. Rate, review and subscribe and reach out to your MUFG sales rep for further information. Come back next week for more insights from the Global Markets Research Team.